Hey everybody, Jason again. I uh, just wanted to give a quick update of uh, some of the things that I've been working on recently. Um, <clears throat> first thing that you'll notice here is I've got this little debug menu. Uh, so I found this kind of useful to uh, change some settings and things like this as I'm developing this app further. Uh, so a lot of what I've done um, since the last video is uh, kind of a lot of grunt work and a lot of optimization. Uh, so we'll kind of go over some of that, but uh, first thing I want to show is that we now have multiple characters, which is kind of cool. Um, and uh, you can see from this uh, sound setting, I don't think that you're going to be able to hear this sound, uh, but uh, I did actually add the character sound. Uh, so for those familiar with the game, uh, each character kind of has its own uh, sound. Um, <clears throat> now you'll notice right away I'm moving to the right and this character here is looking to the left. Uh, so a lot of the uh, sprite files that I'm using are kind of missing so I need to fill in some of those as I go. Uh, and some of the other things that, uh, that I added is um, I really tried my best to match up the speed of the game uh, as you're moving around. Uh, so I kind of did some baseline measurements of the game and kind of moving around and how many blocks per second can I move type thing. Uh, and I got it pretty close. Um, so something that I'm working on here that I would love some help on if, if somebody knows uh, how to do it is you can kind of see as I'm moving around, it just looks blocky. It looks like, you know, uh, you can sort of see the whole world shifts kind of immediately. It's not like a smooth transition. Um, I do believe that I have smooth scrolling going on here because you're never seeing any uh, missing blocks. Uh, but again, it does kind of look chunky. It just looks like you know, uh, the you know that the world is just moving kind of in in chunks of 16, which is totally accurate. Um, but I want to kind of get this to be a little bit more smooth. Uh, so that's something that I'm working on right now. Um, so I wanted to kind of show off some of the work that I did and uh, maybe get your feedback on it. So one of the first things that I did, obviously, is make it where you can uh, change characters. So I added all of the main characters here uh, in this little drop-down menu where you can kind of uh, select them. Uh, and then after a little while, this menu goes away once uh, you don't have mouse movement for some time. Um, and uh, so I found that doing all this sprite work, all this like splitting of sprites, uh, was a little bit tedious, so I, I ended up writing a tool to do this. Um, so let me show you that really quick. So this is the tool that I created. Um, now, you know, people who are really good with Photoshop or uh, web designers, they're probably thinking to themselves, well, th there's already XYZ tool for this. This is ridiculous. Um, and I agree with you, but uh, a couple of Google searches didn't really come up with anything useful, and uh, Photoshop was not really... Uh, you know, allowing me to work as quickly as I wanted to, so I created this little tool here. Um, and all this is, <clears throat> is it's a canvas element, uh, and it shows an image in the correct uh, aspect ratio. And then just as you're moving along with your mouse, uh, it creates one vertical line, one horizontal line, and then it prints off the coordinates, the XY uh, coordinates. Uh, so I would use this when I'm splicing up uh, this character here, I would sort of start up at the top line, find out where the Y is, and then go along here, find out where the X is, and it, this allowed me to move pretty quickly. Um, so I like it. Uh, it definitely helped me out. Uh, so let me uh, jump over here to some of the code, uh, and I can kind of go over some of the things that I've done. Now, right away you'll notice that I added uh, underscore. Um, <clears throat> I had mentioned in one of the last videos that I might end up using this, and I, and I thought it was appropriate. Uh, so for those not familiar, underscore is just a uh, library that um, uh, gives you sort of um, a lot of really useful functions for different things. Uh, so there's some really good uh, array manipulation and iteration methods. Um, there's some really good uh, things like this. Now, what I'm using it for uh, are pretty much function throttling. Uh, now let, let me kind of go over what this means. So where is a good example for this? <clears throat> uh, so one of the things that I noticed in one of the last episodes here is that anytime I would resize the screen, so when I come along here and I resize the screen, uh, this would just eat up my computer's resources. This would make it really super slow. 
uh, to do this. And the reason for that, oh, wrong screen. The reason for that is that uh, when you actually resize the screen, let me just go to this area here. When you call the window add event listener resize, now every single time the size of the screen changes. So when I click the mouse on the side of the screen here, and then I start dragging, uh, so this event fires every single time the, um, uh, the actual size of the window changes, even if I haven't let, a, let go of the mouse, right? Uh, so now what I've done here through underscore is uh, I use their debounce method, which means that uh, it's not going to call the function as fast as possible. It's only going to call calculate layout uh, at most every 300 milliseconds. Uh, so I'm significantly cutting down on the amount of time that I'm redrawing the screen when the um, when the app is resizing. Uh, and I took a similar approach with the character. Uh, so if we look at the player file here, this is uh, the similar approach that I took to actually sort of throttle character movement. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong file here. Uh, so if we go to um, listen for user input, uh, so I now have a lazy key down function, which is using another underscore method called throttle. Uh, now what this means is that it's not going to call the function more than uh, 350 millise every 350 milliseconds. Uh, so if I hold down the uh, arrow keys as I'm moving, which I usually do, and this is how you move around in the game, uh, when you're using a gamepad, you just hold down the direction that you want to go. Uh, and this is how I was able to closely match up the um, the speed that the character should be moving. Uh, and this feels about right to me. Uh, and it looks very similar to the game. Uh, so those are some of the main things that I did. Uh, and I went through and I did some performance uh, audits. And uh, I'm actually getting very good performance on this. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with uh, how things stand. Uh, and some of the other things that I did were uh, just some basic kind of refactoring. Um, some of the feedback that I had been given was, <clears throat> uh, for instance, with this context here, uh, when you look up to where this is defined, uh, so this is uh, part of the canvas here, the context. Now, usually you're using the context to draw things to the screen. And what I was doing is I was initially passing through the context to the constructor of any object, uh, and it would set it as, a, uh, as sort of a property to that object uh, instance. Um, and the feedback that I was given, which I think was valid, is that just pass the context to the method that actually needs it um, instead of passing it along to the object and having it retain it in its state, uh, pass it in just to the render function. Uh, so that will not necessarily uh, add performance, but what it will do is just lessen the likelihood that you're going to have a memory leak. Um, so I think that was pretty good. That was good advice. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, I don't really have anything more, I think, that I can show you. Uh, some of the next things that I need to be working on are certainly getting the uh, all of the sprites. Um, I need to make it where uh, characters can also move within a group. Um, there's a certain kind of mechanic that you have when a users are moving within a group or when players are moving within a group. Um, and uh, they kind of snake behind one of another. So I need to write that logic. Um, what I'm looking to do here, and I'm hoping to have that done, all of this preliminary work done before the next episode, what I'm hoping to have done is um, <clears throat> uh, to have all of the basic kind of movement and navigation uh, mechanics in place. Uh, and then once I have all of that solid basis, uh, I can then move forward and start actually constructing the, um, the game logic itself and actually start to map out some of the quests and map out some of the towns uh, and much more fun stuff like this. So there's a little bit more of uh, some of this preliminary work that uh, needs to be done. Uh, and then we can start getting into some of the fun stuff. Now, sort of what comes next is some screen management. Uh, so right now, we're still dealing with two basic models. Uh, so we have the player in the overworld, and that's it. Uh, but ultimately, if we come back to here, you know, this tunnel right here, that's a whole other world, you know? So uh, the game object is going to have to uh, have some um, logic in it to where it can replace the world that we're navigating. Um, so we're going to have to have that. 
uh, and we're also going to be able to, we're also going to have to code in some of the uh, interactions. So I'm supposed to be able to hit the A button at any point in time and uh, initiate an action. So I can either search for something, or I can talk, or I can uh, equip some equipment, or I can check my stats, uh, things like this. So uh, I'm thinking that I'm going to try to get a lot of that done for the next episode, but it may be uh, two episodes since it is, you know, a bit more work. Uh, so that's it for now. Thanks for watching.